Well, hello collectors. Here we are again. Can you believe it? It's our 100th unboxing. Uh, I apologize for the monkey suit and especially the top hat, uh, but I thought it was just such an important occasion. And when do you get to wear your tuxedo anyhow? Maybe in your coffin, but when else? So uh, I thought it was a great time to uh, uh, to do it uh, because I want everybody to know how important all of this is to me. Uh, it's my life as you know and I know a lot of you guys too are really enjoying it and uh, uh, spending a lot of time with it and hopefully buying good things that will prove to be uh, good investments for the future. Um, as you know we're uh, we're going to do our um, big prize drawing on this video uh, but before we do that Ab and I we just have to have something to drink. And we figured since it's a special occasion, we weren't going to drink the usual uh, Imperial, which everybody snubs their nose at. I don't blame you. Uh, but we're going to have some champagne. And uh, we did the, uh, we had a couple of buckets here to use. This, this bucket comes from um, uh, Karen 2, which was uh, Herman Goering's yacht. Uh, and I'll bet you that there hasn't been a bottle of champagne drunk out of that bucket uh, since 1942 or so when Herman stopped using the yacht. So there you go. Uh, and then just in case we run out, I have another bucket here that's also got some champagne in it. And this is some organization that uses a sun wheel. I thought it was cool, so I kept it. Uh, and the, so far they work. There's ice in there and they're not leaking. Yeah, they're pretty but good. I guess, uh, shall we open one up, Bob? Yeah, it's, watch that cork. Don't Bob. get your uh, nice uh, tuxedo all soiled and champagne. Uh, you wouldn't want that to happen. <laughs> would you? Yeah, you guys would, wouldn't you? You want me to do that, I know. How the hell's this thing come apart here? Oh, here we go. You always use a Bob Burns cutter. That's right. We, we have some Bob Burns cutters here and we'll talk to you some more about them in the future. The infamous Bob Burns cutters. I know some of you guys when I mention Bob Burns you take a drink right away. I think it says that. If somebody sent the it's rules. It's in the rules. Yeah. They, yeah I forget what those rules were. They're but, behind uh, the tapestry. So. Uh, whenever Bob Burns is mentioned <laughs> everybody takes a sip. Uh, so. They've already had five drinks already. Yeah. So let's see how this will work here. I've opened a few of these in my day, but uh, sometimes they're successful and sometimes you get it all over you and it pops onto the ceiling. And Do you want to try a sword with it like those guys do? Yeah, cut the top <laughs> off of the sword. Yeah, good idea. Maybe I'll use a piece of paper here or something that just in case there's a little pop to it. We shall see. Want me to do it? I'm a, I'm a good professional with my champagne opener. You could do it, but then nobody would photograph it, Ob. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens now. Cross your fingers, guys. Get off the table with that thing and point it towards over there. <laughs> well, if the cork's turning. It's not a cork. Yeah, it's a cork. Here we go. Ah, success. Oh, yeah. See, you guys can see <laughs> I've opened one or two of these in my life. Wow, that was uh, that was done too well. The suspense was killing me. <laughs> and Ob, are you uh, up for a little champagne, sure. are you? Little champagne. 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 Yeah. I'll try to do this without it foaming up too much, and we want the glasses to be full, but not full of foam. Oh, it's looking good so far. Yeah, it's a good size glass. There. Looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be, I think it's really gonna be good. Wow. Hey, you guys getting jealous now? I'll bet you are. Little champagne is a rare treat. But, it's the 100th DTC, so we have to do something. Are you supposed to put this back on? Uh, no, no, no you're not do getting that. that back in there, don't worry you about it. You never do that, right? I think I'll never last anyhow, so. No. Well, here's a, 
a glass for you, Ob. Be okay, careful great. you don't spill it. No, I won't and, spill it. And don't break those glasses. They're very, very expensive. Same. Here's to a hundredth. Let's hope we can get the... I won't be too optimistic. Let's get the 150 anyhow <laughs> and uh, see if we can do that. Here's to you. Just try to get the 101. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's dry. I wow, like that. it's dry, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. Mm. <sighs> I don't know how much of that I can drink. Up, I'm hoarse already. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Mm. Yeah, that goes um, goes down pretty well, guys, as you would expect. All right, maybe it's the the Karen two cooler that makes it yeah. so good. And as you know, I I always have to have a, besides a drink, I always have to have a cigar and uh, oh, a, since it's a yeah, DC a one there, yeah. hundred, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna smoke my usual Denobili that keeps going out all the time. So uh, I got a nice um, Arturo Fuente and these are the kind of cigars I like to smoke first thing in the morning about six o'clock out on my front porch. And drive all the neighbors crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You like that champagne, Ob? Sure do. Yeah, it's all right. Now, here we go. Get my trusty Dunhill out. Mm hmm. Need a blowtorch for that one. Yeah. Well, you gotta light it right. Okay. You think it's all right, Ob? I'm not going to be able to see anything. It's going to be smoked out. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe that's good. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's, that's good. good. Yeah. All right. We got that part done. So what's the date today? We forgot to say that. The date is November 5th. That's right. Today is 5 November 2023. Daylight and it's our time. 100th yep. DTC video, in case I didn't say that. You know what, too? Uh, our calendar oh, is a yeah. month behind. Yeah. Somebody, uh, uh, where's that secretary? She's not <laughs> doing her job. Debbie, where are you? You should have a great month on there. But it's okay, though. We figured it out ourselves. So what I want to do, uh, uh, a couple of um, collectors wrote me, and uh, uh, they said that on the 100th video, uh, they would like to hear... Uh, the story uh, of a shooting chain, uh, which I returned to its rightful owners. Uh, I've told this story before, but it's a long time ago, and um, maybe a lot of you collectors didn't hear it, and uh, my apologies to those that have already heard it, but it, it's kind of a good story, and uh, it's very heartwarming, at least for me, anyhow. Uh, you guys, um... Most of you probably know that in Germany, in all the small towns all over Germany, uh, they would have annual uh, shooting contests every summer. And um, the winner of the shooting contest would have a medallion made with uh, his name on the back of it usually, and the number of targets that he shot and the date. Uh, and then that medallion would be put onto a chain and then the chain would be um, uh, able to be worn for a year by the winner until the next contest and then the next winner would get to wear the chain for a year. Uh, so these, these things were very, very important events, not only for the contest itself, but it was a way to get the whole town together because every shooting fest was followed with a huge outdoor party with lots of beer, um pa pa band, and all kinds of food to eat. And uh, it was a great celebration that um, usually lasted for a weekend. Uh, normally in August is when they would have these. So anyhow, that gives you the background of what a shooting chain is. 
So, my story begins. How's your champagne? Um, Yours is doing a lot worse than mine, I'll tell you that much. There must be a leak in this AH glass. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, I acquired a, um, a very elaborate uh, shooting chain uh, from a little town called Rodenburg uh, back in 2010. Um, the chain was, uh, all the, all the uh, fittings on it were all 800 marked and it, and it was really a, really a nice chain. And I bought the chain from a uh, family in Indiana and um, I put it up on our website. Uh, I had it valued at um, four thousand dollars because it was such a such a nice chain. Um, the the, uh, the chain was up there for maybe about a month, uh, and then one day uh, the phone rang, and uh, Debbie comes over and she says, "Hey, Tom, the." Uh, the, the, the Burgermeister from a town called Rodenburg is on the phone. And I thought, wow, that must have something to do with that chain. So I answered the phone, and, uh, oh, wow, good cigar. And this lovely man, the Burgermeister, uh, started talking to me. And, ah, oh, Mr. Widman, you have our uh, Schutzenkette. Um, that kette um, disappeared uh, from our village uh, when the U.S. Army uh, came in to clean out the cities in 1945. And we saw on your pictures that um, uh, you showed the back of the medallions, and uh, they have the names of many of our families in the town, you know, in Germany, in these small towns, these families uh, never moved. Uh, and the chain is very, very important to us and, and really means a lot. And he went on to say that they had um, three or four uh, previous chains that went back into the 1700s. Um, and they had chains after this one, which was the last date on this one was 1938. They had chains after that one also. So he he said that uh, uh, we just uh, we we just have to have uh, that chain back because it means so much uh, to the history of um, Rodenburg. Um, and the Burgermeister was uh, he was just the nicest man. Oh, you just. Uh, uh, he spoke very good English, but you know the great German accent. Boy, that gets me every time, and uh, and I just loved what he had to say. He was even emotional about it, how much the chain meant to them, and he wanted to know it was how much would it cost them to buy the chain back. And I'm thinking while he's talking, and I thought, well, Whitman, you know you. You've done okay in this business, and uh, uh, this sounds like something that might be a good thing to do. And I said, Sir, Herr Burgermeister, this chain is going to cost you nothing, uh, and I've been looking for an excuse to take my boys to Germany. Uh, how about if I bring it over to your village and present it to you personally? And, oh. He went crazy, absolutely crazy over it, and he said, okay, uh, we would love to do this, and you can come during our shooting fest in, in August, and he made arrangements for us. Um, it was going to be Ab, Tom Jr., me, and my very, very good friend, uh, the late Willie Warda. Um, Willie was especially... Um, important too because he spoke he speaks the German language uh, plus he was my great friend and and I wanted to take him to Germany so the Burgermeister made arrangements there in their best guest house uh, which I remember the name of it was uh, the Berghof right up <laughs> I guess so, yeah, it was yeah. the Berghof and uh, uh, he gave us um, three or four rooms at 
at no charge and um, so we 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 got the put the chain into a beautiful case and packed up and uh, went to Deutschland and mm, when we got there uh, the towns um, government and the Burgermeister all welcomed us and uh, showed us to our quarters and so forth and then that afternoon they said uh, Herr Wittmann we are having a, um, a parade for you around the city I said well, what do you mean what do you mean oh no 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 we're having we're having a big parade uh, with an um -pa, pa band and we have a special horse-drawn carriage and we want you uh, to ride in the carriage and go all around the town. I mean, it was, it was like, it was like I was the Kaiser or something, you know. It just was, uh, it was unbelievable. So I, I rode in this carriage and you go down every street and everybody's clapping like you really did something. I mean, it was just, it was silly. And the, uh, there was an old man that was with me in the carriage. He was in his 90s. And um, he told me that um, that he remembered the uh, the old shooting chain, um, and he said it disappeared in 1945. And he said he saw the chain wrapped around the barrel of a Sherman tank, and that's the last time <clears throat> that the chain was seen since 1945 which I thought was really, uh, I can't just see the GIs, they're, they're sent into the village to clear the town of weapons and so forth, and then what do they do? They steal the shooting chain out of the, out of probably the clubhouse or something like that. So sooner or later it all wound up in uh, Indianapolis where I acquired the chain. So we had this great ride around town and then a, a wonderful meal that night and so forth. And then the next day was the, uh, uh, the big presentation. And uh, they had a, a big stage with the, the band behind it. And uh, uh, I don't exaggerate, collectors, there was 2,500 to 3,000 people all <laughs> sitting there. And there's me, <laughs> it's just, uh, and so I had, I had tried to write up a little speech in German, you know, talking about how my grandparents were all German on both sides and this and that, and uh, and I'm and I'm trying to read it in German and just to a, doing a terrible job, <laughs> and then finally I said, well, don't lose it again. And I walked off the stage, and they thought that was a riot. They just, they just loved that remark. Uh, and the German newspapers were there, and uh, uh, they printed that. Don't lose it again. So that was um, that was that was what happened then. And then uh, we had the chain in a, in a big frame and uh, presented it to the uh, to the Burgermeister and the the town leaders. And then there was a big. Uh, party that was going to happen then but as I was walking off the stage after making the presentment uh, I couldn't believe it collectors so I still get I still get emotional about it they played the Star Spangled Banner for me I'll tell you when stuff like that happens it makes you makes you proud to be an American Mm, I was no good after that, um, so that's that's kind of the story. And I'll, I'm going to show you a couple things. Okay, collectors, uh, Ob needs a little refresher here on his hit, and hmm, I can't believe it. I do too. Must have been somebody sneaking in here drinking when I wasn't looking, but I don't know. But mm, this cigar is great. Well, I told you the story, and uh, I thought it would be nice also to to show you. Um, this is what the uh, the Rodenberg shooting chain looked like. 
uh, it was a really a beautiful thing. Um, there's a couple a couple of medallions are apparently going to time that aren't on it, uh, and the reason I know that is because look at this picture, guys. From 1930, there is the shooting chain uh, being worn. Which one? This one? Yep, right here. And it's the exact same chain. There's just a couple of medallions that are that are missing. Isn't that something from 1930? So you can see how important this was to these people. And notice how everybody is formally dressed for the shooting contest, right down to yeah. the top hats. It looked just like you. Just like me, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wish I had my top hat when I went over there. So that I think that's very interesting to see the actual chain uh, before it was liberated by the U.S. Army. And I'll show you some other pictures. Um, uh, this is um, this is me making the presentment to the Burgermeister. And then here's a, uh, a closer shot of the presentment. And then uh, in these pictures, um, I think I had already presented the chain. There's uh, Tom Jr. there. And uh, Ob, were you in there? No. I was no. taking the photographs as usual. Uh, and a man named. Uh, Norbert, this man here, Norbert, uh, he was, he's from another shooting club, and he was the man that actually called the Burgermeister in Rodenburg and told him about the chain being uh, advertised on my website. Here's some other pictures here, and uh, that's me when they were playing the uh, Star Spangled Banner, the National Anthem. What an honor. And then I thought uh, it's interesting too. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is me and uh, Willie Warda, and that was the guy that won the chain while we were there. So he has the modern chain that he's wearing. See, so that was cool. And and then the, the local German newspapers uh, ran the story and. Uh, uh, what do they say? Uh, Amerikaner Lieben Rodenberg. I guess that means uh, American loves Rodenberg, and they go on to tell a little bit of the, the story and some pictures of the event. Uh, and then one other uh, photograph that we that we had made uh, while we were there. It's a it's a pretty big photograph, and uh, in the photograph. Uh, you can see, I think tilt, I'm in the. Tilt it towards me. Yeah, that's that much better. Yeah. I'm in the middle somewhere here, and uh, Tom Jr.'s in there, and Ob's in there, yeah, I'm there. Uh, and Willie Ward is in there. And you can see, uh, even in 2010, uh, the formality of the occasion with the top hats and the, the, uh, the tuxedos with tails and so forth, a very, very important thing. And this is the plaque that I had put on to the bottom of the chain, and I had an extra one made. Uh, and it says, um, uh, presented with deep respect to the citizens of Stadt Rodenberg, we are proud to return the old shooting chain to its original owners, uh, the Whitman family, Moorestown, New Jersey. So... I'll tell you, with something like that, um, I don't know, a lot of you guys say, oh, I should have sold the chain for the $4,000. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As you get older, you'll, you'll realize this, that um, in life, um, you get a hell of a lot more out of something than you give than it costs you. Um, how do you ever have anything neater happen than what happened to me 
and my family uh, during that presentation to be honored like that just for giving back a stupid chain uh, and then to have your national anthem played where you were kind of representing America I mean on a real little small scale with just a stupid chain but still representing America and I can't I can't tell you how much that means to me and it's something that I'll remember uh, the rest of my life and here's to uh, Rodenberg I hope to someday go back there and uh, and see my uh, see my chain in place in their museum next to their other chains I think it's very funny the uh, the Rodenberg shooting group uh, they have a meeting every year <coughs> and uh, they all wear these um, these cardboard shooting chains when they're at the meeting uh, but what's really funny uh, the medallion at the bottom it says don't lose it again <laughs> I know you're all waiting for the big drawing and in anticipation but after all this is still an unboxing video too uh, the good part is I only got a couple of boxes this week, so it won't take long, but I think we'll do that first if it's okay. You guys all right with that? Thank you. Um, I got this one box that's uh, been uh, piquing my curiosity here. Uh, it says, do not open until... DTC 100 <laughs> so and it's pretty heavy and you wonder well is this the one with the exploding <laughs> chicken or something or uh, uh, I'm going to get hit with a, uh, a I don't know but I guess um, what do you think collectors should we take a chance <laughs> and open it let me see who it's from here uh, yeah, I don't have my glasses I can't read his name but I should be able to What's his name, Ob? I think he deserves credit for whatever it is that he's sending. Can you read that on the... I think that's our friend John Lawson. John Law... Oh, I know John yeah. Lawson. Allentown man. John Lawson is the director of the um, wonderful Allentown show. The Forks and of the Delaware. What's that? Forks of the Delaware. Forks of the Delaware, they call it, yeah. Uh, and John is... a. Uh, is a very good friend and uh, valued person, so I'm not worried about uh, a chicken blowing up here. His picture's on the wall, but it's covered right now, so I can't right. show it. Well, we'll have to use one of these Bob Burns cutters here again. Oh, nope, that's a drink. <laughs> that's a drink for you guys. Bob Burns, here it goes. Whoa, look at that. It went through that like butter. All right, let's see what we got here. I'm really curious about what John Lawson sent. What a nice man. Well, I better reserve that until I see what's in here. <laughs> well, that looks, like looks like a couple of boxes here. Here's one, and here's another. I'll get this out of here without knocking my champagne over. Well, what should we open first, Tom? What do you think? Open the bag. Okay. Mm. You like those bags? Ah, I like this champagne better. Maybe just a little bit. Ah, perfect. I don't want to get too loaded here. I won't be able to pronounce your name when the drawing comes, guys. But... We have it on paper. There'll be no problem. The bag. Oh, the bag first. Okay, <laughs> Ob wants the bag. All right. You just want the bag because yeah, you want this bag. plastic bag because right. we're not allowed to use them in New Jersey. All right. Don't cut it. There's something here. It says, "Congratulations on yeah. reaching 100." Thanks, John. Oh, that must mean there's something good in here. Well, let's see what we got here. Uh, where's this Bob Burns cutter? Uh, another drink, guys. Bob Burns cutter. 
Uh oh. <laughs> oh jeez. Look at this. Ob and Tom. <laughs> it looks like you got cigars, Ob. Yeah. Gee, I wonder where they're gonna end up. I'll buy them all <laughs> yeah, for you. Okay. <laughs> Wow, isn't that nice? And they look like good ones, too. Yeah, thanks, John. Boy, John, that's uh, <laughs> that's really nice. Uh, and let's see what else is in here. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. No. Something for Miss Debbie. A full Whitman sampler oh, here. There you go, yep. Yeah, that's always a good thing, huh? For Debbie. You guys know Debbie loves chocolate. So that's good. Uh, Sending Debbie to candy like that, can't send any, uh, send any Debbie candy, you never know, she might forget to charge your postage or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a little, little bribery there maybe, but okay. Boy, that's, uh, that's really nice, John. Everybody thanks you, including myself. And let's see what's in this other box. Mm-hmm. I think I'm getting drunk on this champagne. I'm slurring my words. I should stick to the Imperial. I'm not used to this. That's all right. You'll forgive me, I hope. Kind of fun to get drunk on a Sunday in a tuxedo, huh? Mm. I see what this is. Mm. Boy, this Wente's doing good. Yeah. It hasn't gone out yet, Ob. Yeah, I see. It's doing yeah. very good. Wow, how thick is this? Wow, what the heck is this? Oh my goodness. Boy, it's heavy too. What the heck is this? I'm telling you. I can't believe it. Look at that beautiful wow, eagle. Yeah, look at that. Oh, and copper. Congratulations on reaching DTC 100 from your friends at Forks of the Delaware Historical Arms Society, the Allentown Show. Huh. Is that something or what? Wow. That's a great eagle head, too. Oh. Uh, John, that, this is too much. I'm touched. We we'll have to put it with our Oscars. Yeah, well, this has to go in front of the Oscars. It's even better. Mm, that's very Boy, nice. Boy, isn't yeah. that a, a beautiful thing? What are you doing this for? We don't do anything. We're just standing <laughs> here trying to entertain you guys. Well, a lot and of you people do stuff appreciate like this. It's do, just so. Uh, it's so nice of you. Oh. You know, uh, People think that, oh, this military bunch of guys, you know, but look, look how sweet they are, and look at the heart they have, and uh, the enthusiasm, and uh, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a wonderful thing. I really love that. Now I see why I wrote the note on the box. <laughs> yeah. Look at it on both sides. and yeah, it's a nice piece. Yeah, I mean, that. How heavy is it? Oh, it's heavy. It's all copper. Things are solid copper. Ah, John, you're too much. Um, well, thank you um, to you, yourself, and uh, to others, I guess, at the uh, Allentown Show that may have helped with this. It's, um, uh, it's too much, uh, but <laughs> I really love it, though. Boy, I love that, huh? Do you like it, Ob? Sure. Kidding? God, the eagle has a nice Germanic look to it too. Wow. Well, we shall cherish that, and uh, we'll put that in a uh, a spot of honor here down the cellar. Uh, although with all the clutter we right have here, now. put it on the table. Put it on the table. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good idea, Ob. You have more sense than I do, Ob. You're right. You should go right. It's on display immediately. Oh. Wow, what a wonderful gift. Yeah, it's perfect. I am really touched. Well, collectors, I'm uh, I'm still so taken aback by that uh, 
this beautiful eagle. Man, I like that. Such an honor when people do stuff like that just for me and Ob. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I don't think we deserve it, but thank you very much. It's very, very nice. All right, we got the Bob Burns cutter out again. Have another drink. <laughs> and uh, we're going to open up a, uh, looks like a used Amazon box here. Uh, this is coming from Syracuse, New York. Let's see what we got here. No matter what it is, I don't care what it is, it can't beat that eagle. Mm. You notice two collectors, that cigar has not gone out yet. How many times do I light a Denobili in one of these? Mm. Ah, this uh, Champagna is pretty good too. Ah, that's what we got here, guys. Looks pretty good on the surface. Yeah. Well, this looks like stuff we know about, guys. Now I need the Bob Burns cutter for this. There we go. Let's see if I can get this open. It looks like some interesting things here. All the kind of stuff you like, I think, I hope. Ah, here we go. Let's see. Uh, Wow, this looks like a nice set of uh, naval dagger hangers, maybe, if I'm seeing through the plastic. Yeah. I like, um, I love naval hangers, and you know, they're, they're really getting rare anymore and hard to find. And look at this, guys. Wow. This is a really beautiful set of uh, Kriegsmarine hangers the aluminum base uh, with a gilded finish and and look at the look at the gild on them and all and they're real guys uh, that's a that's a killer there that that would um, that would greatly go with a, a mint dagger and you got the little uh, regain chain on the short strap and wow I like them you like them Ob? let me see the back side all right there's the back side Looks just as good as the front side. No wear. Yeah. Are they marked? Yeah, we can look and see if the. Sometimes the buckles are, but no, they're not. They're not marked buckles. Okay. Yeah, they're nice. But they're really, really uh, they don't super. Look like they're ever issued. No, I mean that's uh, that's the best of the best for true Kriegsmarine. You know, the 1938, 39, 1940. Boy, those are those are fantastic. And let's see what else we got here. There's a little envelope. Well, this is stuff we can always use, I think. If I can get it open. Well, I don't think I can get it open, but I'll try in here. I uh, need some more champagne, I guess. Ah, oh, had it open and dropped it. See, that's a drinking. Try it again. Uh, this is a tough one. Well, cut it open with a Bob Burns cutter. Yeah, the Bob Burns cutter will take care of it. There we go. Why mess around with it when you got a utility tool like that Bob Burns? Wow, look at this. Okay, guys, uh, here we go. Here's a, an SS short hanger, an early one. It's the same type of hanger that would go with a Himmler dagger, unmarked, solid nickel. Boy, that's a beauty. A hundred people are going to want that. I got one guy in mind that just wrote me the other day that's looking for one of those, so it may go to him. But And here's a belt loop, too. SS belt loop. That's fantastic stuff. That is like gold, that hanger. It's uh, it's probably all one rig, wouldn't you think? It would go it's together. probably what? Yeah, one rig. They go together, right? It looks like it, yeah. yeah. Let's just see how they look together. So you can get the real idea of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, not bad at all, huh? Well, that's great. 
Yeah, this is uh, this is the rig for Himmler dagger. Wow. No marks on the early ones, right? No, no marks and conventional clip with the uh, old nickel. And then let's see what this is. Oh, oh, great guys, look at this. It's obviously a Kriegs flag. It's all marked there with a Kriegs flag. The size is uh, 80 by 135, very desirable size. I can't show the swaz because it offends some people, but you get the idea is what it, it is. Can you see if it's navy marked? Is it navy marked? I don't, I don't know. know. Check we'll the top the... corner. It's usually on the opposite corner of that. No, it's no, uh, be right behind your hand. Your right I don't hand. see a naval eagle, Bob. No, you okay, it's not marked. Yeah. You see one? No. No. Okay. So it's a conventional uh, Kriegs flag, but this is the size that, boy, you know, if you want to display a flag in your collecting room, this is just the right size. Uh, it's not going to take up your whole wall and just really look uh, terrific. Uh, this flag still got all of its original colors. It's um, perfect condition. I don't see any holes or any problems. See all that stitching they did down the way. Just great. Uh, that's the best you'll see, guys. Well, that was a, a very, very nice um, nice package to open. Did you like that stuff, Bob? Sure. Sure? Yeah. Yeah, it looked good to me, too. This hangers are great, both of them. Yeah, the hanger. I love that hanger. You know, you say, oh, it's just a stupid leather thing, but boy, <laughs> try to find one. Man, yeah. and, it, and it makes your... I mean, boy, to complete your dagger with that, oh, I'm sorry there's not 30 or 40 of them because I know there's so many guys looking for that stuff and you're going to deluge me with, I want that hanger, I know what you do, and, I, and I'm going to make all these apologies, and <laughs> you know, only one person can get it, and I know, but, but that's the hobby, right? Remember, the, uh, this search is the big fun. Once you get it, you put it in the closet, and ah, what's next? <laughs> so here we go. Uh, gee, that was, a, that was a nice box. I like that box. Well, we got one more, Rob. Okay. This one's kind of heavy. I know you guys want to get to the drawing, I know. I know. I was going to do the drawing, but Rob wanted to do the unboxing next, so... I guess he just wants to keep your anticipation going out of the ceiling. Uh, what was that? Yeah, that was pretty slurred, wasn't it? Yeah. That's all that champagne. Anticipation. Just keep it down to one syllable words, okay? Yeah, yeah, you're right, Ob. I'm sorry, guys. I guess I haven't too much champagne. I'm not used to this. I'm used to hard liquor. Hard liquor I can handle. Uh, champagne? No. I don't know who this is from. I can't read it. But it looks pretty pretty good. Well packed. and uh, Oh great. Uh, a, a list of things here. Dear Tom, please find five daggers in this box. Mm. All right, that sounds interesting. You guys up for five daggers before we have the rolling? You're probably ready to kill me at this point. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. But the good part, guys, it looks like they're all held with uh, rubber bands instead of tape, so that might make it easier to, uh, to get them open. Well, we'll see what we have here. I wonder if this Fuente is still lit. Mmm. Mmm-hmm. A lot better than the Denobles, right guys? Special occasion to smoke this big cigar. Okay, here we go. We'll we'll get these rubber bands off with any luck. We'll try to anyhow. Let's 
see here. Uh, yes, it's going okay, guys. I think we'll be all right with this. We shall see. I don't hear something. That, no, maybe not. Well, I'm getting frustrated. I'll do the Bob Burns cutter. Another drink, guys. All right, here we go. All right, we're getting there. Oh, broke that one. I know I don't want to take up too much time because I know you guys want to see the big drawing. But I'm doing the best I can. Oh, these rubber bands are not necessarily that easy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a double. Doubles, yeah. Uh, looks like we might have a second model Luftwaffe here. I'm not sure. Boy, those rubber bands are tight. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy, is it? I think the tape would have been easier, huh? We're rubber band to death here. We could buy some stock and rubber bands with all these we have here. Boy, oh boy. I think you need a pair of scissors for the next one. Yeah. Oh. Alright, let's see what we got here, guys. We got some free free bubble paper. I always like that. Ah, oh, looks like a nice um, Second model Luftwaffe. Look at that with a nice white grip and looks like generic fittings. Yeah, we got a got a couple of cracks in the grip here. That's not so good, but uh, oh well. Uh, the blade's not so good either. Yeah, it's a little rough. Yeah, this is a yeah, this is a uh, entry level piece at best. Uh, it's a shame because the uh, the mounts are really nice, but the uh, the grip is really uh, really sad. See, it's broken up here too, and so uh, I mean, that, if you just want a real dagger, there you go. Well, here we go, guys. We're we're getting over that uh, that uh, Luftwaffe. Not much there, but uh, let's hope that. Uh, other than good rubber bands, or something <laughs> better in this. Well, we shall see. No offense, by the way. Just, you know, talking what what is and is. And you know this hobby. Uh, everybody wants perfection. And uh, let's face it, these things went through a war. And then another 80 years of what? Uh, the veterans kids did to the things and all that kind of stuff so let's see what we got here ah this looks nice yeah looks like a nice um, nice icorn from what I can see here with a with an interesting uh, port -a pee on it um, this port -a pee was not like this though it was wrapped in the normal way I can tell because see the little yeah. little wear right there where it would have hit the so we'll have to retie that. Uh, the grip looks nice. There's no no uh, lifting or the, the uh, fittings. They got beautiful silvering. Oh, all right. I think that first one we opened was just the wrong one, Ob. That's a full mint icorn blade. Let me see the maker. Yeah, that's a nice, uh, nice quality uh, piece there. Yeah, a lot of cross grain in there. It's a nice piece. Oh yeah, it's a good, uh, good piece. So that, uh, that one will make up for some of the Luftwaffe. All right, let's see what else we got, guys. We got three more to go before the big drawing. Hang in there. Don't go crazy yet. We're going to get to it. 
You're probably all on fast forward if I know what you're doing. Ah, where's that damn drawing? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Bob Burns cutter here. Get that rubber band on. Use those scissors. I got you. I don't know. But Bob Burns works better than scissors. Oh, still more on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. Uh, double wrapped, fellas. Okay. Yep, we're getting there. Man, oh man. Let's see if this uh, Wente is still lit. No! There you go, guys. A good cigar does go out. Mm -hmm. And good champagne does go out too. I think I need another little hit. How's your champagne, Bob? I'm okay. You're still okay? I think you like the Imperial more than the Champagne. Alright guys, let's see what we got here. Oh, this looks nice. Mm. Wow. Yeah, well this is a good thing guys. An untouched, uncleaned uh, DLV glider pilot dagger. It's in very, very nice condition. These little scuffs and all, the little Meltonium shoe cream and bring it up just like new because none of the scuffs are through the leather. Nice hanger. Look at the patina to those nickel fittings too. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the blade. Yeah, not so good. I don't just know. not dupe on there? No. Huh? Is it oil or anything, or is that just sharpened? No, nah, it's, it's, it's got up. some age to it, yeah. yeah. No, that's a, it's a shame. The outside is yeah. uh, is really, really nice. I guess it's got the K on it and all that. Yeah, the throat stamped, Let's and see. I think. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a shame. This is a real, um, a real nice, um, nice, nice DLV. Maybe the blade will clean up some. You know, that's a, people over the years. Oh, look at that! They, they they handle the blade and then you put it away and then uh, after a few months, the acid in your fingers eats right into the uh, the blade surface. Okay, well. Two more to go before the big drawing. I know you're fast forwarding, but I'm doing the best I can here. If so far there hasn't been anything to knock you off your chair here. Other than that great eagle. Wow. Let's see if we can get this. This is going to be another double wrap job here. The good part about daggers like this, though, is you can get an original example uh, for a lot less money than what it would cost for a really fine piece. And you say, oh, yeah, 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 but, you know, new collectors or young fellas that got families to raise and all, uh, let's face it, you don't have a lot of money to, to spend on this. The kids are more important. And the wife is really important. So, you know, things like this, uh, maybe you can buy for three quarters of what uh, a nicer one would cost and you still have something. And then when you get making some more money in whatever your job is in, you can always trade it and upgrade the piece. So don't look at these with, uh, uh, who wants that? Because they're still good things. Well, what do we got here? Oh, this looks like a nice... Uh, 
a nice SA dagger. Got an early hanger with a loop on it. The anodizing is uh, is really good. Uh, uh, the cross guards are really nice. I don't think I see a grouping number on there, but uh, you see one of them in your camera? No? no. It's kind of strange, but uh, if it's an early, real early one, uh, like a Rome or something, a lot of them didn't have grouping numbers, but cross guards are nice. Let's see what we got here. Oh, nice blade. Very nice. Alles for Deutschland. And that blade is still got the cross grain in it. And let's see what we got. Oh, well, <laughs> it's an RZM mark. Um, it's possible. It's possible that it's uh, one that was made right when the RZM started and it would still have nickel fittings. What's the M7 slash 8? Well, we'll have to look on your uh, yeah. your sheet, Ob, but yeah. I, I don't know where your sheet is. I think is it's that, up there. Is it up there? Well, we'll get it. Oh boy, now we have to do research in the middle of a video. Oh boy. Oh, here we go. Is this it, Ob? Yeah, that's it. All right, we got to. You don't have the uh, the daggers, or I don't have my glasses. Can you uh, let me look? Let me, let me borrow your glasses. Oh, yeah, no, I can't see. Good idea. <laughs> I'll try uh, to keep it close. Boy, they're not much better. I got to look for the M7s here. Uh, yeah, here we go. Um, this is a M7 slash eight slash eight. Boy, these glasses are, I hope you can see out of them. M7, well, that goes back, that's one of the beginning numbers here. Wow, it's an Ed Gembrook. Well, boy. Uh, that makes me think that, uh, that these um, nickel mounts are original. Uh, I think that, you know, Gembrook did not make a lot of SA daggers. And uh, they probably were using up the early fittings they have. And that explains why there's no group of number on the back, too. Uh, so this is a, um, quite, a, quite a nice dagger and quite rare. And it's in really good condition, too. You know, a lot of guys are going to say, oh, that's an RZM, it, uh, it shouldn't have those nickel fittings. Well, it, it does because this was a small company and they were probably using up the amounts that they had, which makes sense. Any good business doesn't waste things. If you got something that didn't sell, you can maybe blend it in with the next things that you sell. And that's what they did here. So I, I like that dagger. In fact, I love it. I think that's absolutely 100% original and in really, really nice uh, condition. It's funny, you look at stuff and, oh, this can't be. And then when you study it further, you realize that, oh, this is, this is what it is. And you can't prejudge pre things until you uh, look through the whole owl, look through the whole thing. <laughs> Boy, these rubber bands just are really amazing here. Now, let's see what we got here. Now we're getting there. Oh boy. The good part is, guys, this is the last dagger, and then we're going to get to the big drawing. I hope you're all watching. Hope you're not fast forwarding, but I'll bet you are. But that's okay, I understand. Let's see what we got here. Oh, wow. Here we go, guys. That is a super early SA, SA dagger. Super. The anodizing is perfect. The grip has nice grain, and uh, wow. Boy, that's nice, the deep uh, accent grooves and all. I don't know, this sort of looks like it's going to be an icorn dagger, but I don't know. Let's, 
or maybe an EPS, but we'll see. Oh, nice blade too. Good, really good blade. Uh, what is that, Al? I can't see from the champagne. EPS, is it? It's in. Yep, certainly it's probably a ground room. Ground room, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's very, very nice. It's basically an ES at this point, but yeah, they left a little bit. A uh, little trademarks taken out, is it? The P's going, the head's going, yeah. but it's there. Yeah, that's a ground room, but um, but the condition is uh, really, really nice. I like that. Well, collectors, we're, uh, we're finally down to what you've all been waiting for. Uh, and uh, Ob says he wants another hit of champagne and uh, apparently I drank it all. Um, I'm not handling this champagne as well as I do the Imperial. I'm slurring a few things which I apologize for. Uh, anybody want to get in a fight? No, I'm not, in, not up to that point yet. But uh, Well, you won't have to have yeah. another champagne drink till 2.50. Yeah. So. What are you looking at? You know, remember that with guys at the bar? You know, you're sitting there and some guy across the bar. What are you looking at? Oh, man. That's when I run to the men's room when that happens. Well, we're going to try to open this other one. I hope it's as successful as the last one. Oh, that came off good. Now, let's see if the cap comes off good, too. Is it turning? Yeah, it's turning. So, we might be all right here, Rob. You might get a drink. I'm not sure. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I'm telling you, I ought to get into this business. I'd love to be a mater D. I think that was my really my life's true work. But uh, I'm stuck with edge weapons. I guess I'll just have to live with it. You can never get anything to eat because you'd be talking the whole time to everybody. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. But at least if you're a mater D, you can um, you can get to wear a tuxedo all the time and. Uh, and be important to people that come in, you know, they give you that little slip on the side, you know, a, a little 20 or something for a good table. I like stuff like that. Okay, Ob, there you go. All right, let's do it. Now, collectors, we're finally, after all of this, down to the, to the big drawing. Um, I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun, and um, before I re-show you all the prizes that are uh, going to be given out, uh, you guys have heard me mention the Bob Burns cutters endlessly uh, for these last hundred videos, and we have a surprise guest today. I'm telling you. <laughs> We don't mess around. I want to introduce everybody to my great friend from high school, Bob Burns. Yeah, there he is. There he is, Bob. <laughs> hey, Bob. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming in, Bob. Yeah, you're welcome. Quite welcome. You know, Bob and I, um, we used to ride on the on the school bus uh, in the late fifties. Um, in those days in Morristown, it was a, a, a countryfied place. Remember, there were farms all it's over. All it was. It's all it was. Yeah, and um, uh, it would take maybe an hour or something to uh, get all the different kids all around the, the place. And uh, Bob and all, I always sat together, and uh, I, I guess from probably around the Seventh and eighth grade, I guess, is where we yeah, started. Was right. yeah. Were you guys in the same class? Yeah, we were in the same class. What class and, uh, was that? Bob lived a couple, maybe three miles from me as the arrow goes, but with all the stops and the bus and all that. Do you remember, Bob, by the way, do you remember the bus driver's name? <laughs> Joe something, right, wasn't it? 
Mr. Bartello. Oh, Bartello's, yeah. Remember him, Mr. They, Bartello? He was always him. on us all the time. We were yeah, carrying on. Guy. And, yeah, he was always nasty guy. reporting us nasty to the guy. principal <laughs> and all that. Yeah, he was a nasty me. guy. Well, was me, yeah. me too. We were always in trouble. Well, you were causing that. all the trouble. That's what yeah, it. that's probably what it is. But, <laughs> what uh, class did you guys graduate in? Uh, we were in the class of 1961, 61, I think, Bob. Right. Yeah. Yes, last yeah. class from the old school. Yeah, it was. Um, they knocked down the high school after Bob and I got out, probably so they could get rid of it. Yeah, to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Bob and I, we were we were great friends um, all through our teenage years, yeah. and uh, uh, Bob was always over my house, or I was over his house, and uh, um, I know. Uh, Bob is six months older than me, so he had his driver's license before right. I did. And uh, Bob got his mother's Hudson Jet. That's right. Was it a 53 or 52? 53 Hudson Jet. 53 Hudson Jet. Beautiful car. Uh, with stick shift and all that. Three, on, three on the tree. Yeah, three on the tree, yeah. That's right. And uh, we rode around that, and, uh, and I remember that first year when you got your driver's license and I didn't have mine because I'm born in July and Bob was born in January uh, the the uh, junior prom came up that year and uh, Bob had his license and uh, so Bob was elected to be the driver oh, for the prom I don't know whether you remember this or not oh, yeah. but my mother in those days she had this Remember that great big 58 Cadillac 58 she had? Cadillac. 58 yeah. Cadillac. And boy, Bob, you look so good behind Did the I wheel of that. Oh, <laughs> you look great. That 58 Cadillac. And um, I was in the back seat with my date. And I, I, I'm not sure whether it was Mary Beth Toomey or my first wife, Kathy, the mother of my four children. <laughs> I don't remember. I think it was Toomey. Probably Mary yeah. Beth Toomey. And I know you had a real... Real good looking girl up there that was tall yeah, like was you. That? What was her name? Do you remember her name? No, not really. You don't remember her name? No, no. Oh, well, you must not have got too far with her then. <laughs> <laughs> not that I didn't try. <laughs> not that you didn't try. Yeah, there you go. But we had, Bob and I had a lot of fun um, through high school. And uh, then after we got out of high school, I went on to college and Bob went into the United States Air, Air Force. Four years. Four years, and uh, you served a lot of time in Greece, and uh, met a lovely woman that became your wife then, right. and uh, great stuff. And of course, I uh, I married my first girlfriend, and, uh, and then later married my second girlfriend. <laughs> but that, okay, so Bob and I, uh, after high school, we went on our separate ways, and I went on to college, and Bob went to the United States Air Force. And uh, how long were you there? Four years? Four years in the Air Force. And you were in Greece, right? In Greece for about two and a half. And then you, you met a lovely, lovely, lovely girl there mm -hmm. that was just great. And uh, of course, I I married uh, my first uh, sweetheart, Kathy, uh, and then married Marie later. They're the only two girls I ever dated in my life, and I was married to both of them. I don't know. That's mm -hmm. kind of interesting, I guess. I told you something about that. <laughs> yeah. But you know, everybody knows you, the Bob Burns box cutter. That's it. How did that happen? I mean, we, you watched our videos, I think, and uh, what, what happened with that? Well, I kept on watching your videos, you kept on losing your cutter all the time. Yeah, that's so true. So I figured yeah. I'd buy you a whole box of them, that that's, way you would, wouldn't lose them. That's right, and uh, Bob got me the box, and then I... When you'd use the first piece of it, it would become dull, and I didn't even know how to, you know, you're supposed to break the supposed tip to break off, it off the right? end. And, you were uh, throwing them out, right? Yeah. <laughs> but Bob got all concerned about that. He said, what the hell's the matter with you? All you have to do is break it off and all that. And as you guys know, the Bob Burns cutter has become famous here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all because of you, all sir. Of me. <laughs> me and Amazon. You and Amazon. <laughs> and what we decided we're going to do... Uh, since Bob is a, a big celebrity over box cutters, <laughs> uh, Bob is going to make the um, the drawings of the winners. Yeah, I'm honored. You think you can do that, Bob? I'm honored to do that. Well, you, 
not an honor, but well, it's nice though. And nothing else to do today. Nothing else to do. <laughs> oh, you got all these guys wanting. Oh, I would. Yeah, let's get so, to it. These hey, poor guys waiting here. Yeah, that's right. So what? Uh, what I'll do is um, before we, before we make the drawing, I'll just show you what, what everything is. The, um, the, uh, first prize. Oh, this thing's heavy. The first prize is this beautiful army dagger, icorn in mint condition. The second prize is this great Hitler Youth knife with a motto. The third prize is a wool SA armband, very, very nice. Uh, the fourth prize uh, are all these interesting um, uh, GI, what do you call these, Ob? Sweetheart pins. Sweetheart pins. You know, GIs would buy this stuff and give them to their girlfriends and they'd wear them to show that they had, they had a boyfriend in the service or whatever. And it's a nice grouping. Uh, the fifth prize, the great Jim Atwood book, the book that started the hobby. Uh, this is the book that changed my life. I don't know whether it's better or worse, but it changed my life. And we have a copy that's still in the paper wrapping. So that's a, that's a really nice thing, I think. I would love to have that in my library just like it is. And then the sixth prize is a full set of um, Thomas T. Whitman exploring reference books. And as you guys know, we've been sold out of the Volume 1 Army book for a couple of years. And uh, Ob, Ob found a book somewhere in the crawl space. So we've included an Army book in this grouping. And um, I see on eBay these army books sell for four or five hundred dollars alone. So, um, so I think that's a uh, a really nice, uh, really nice prize. And uh, then the seventh prize uh, is um, this great SS book that was written by um, uh, the German writer uh, Rolf Siegert. Uh, and these books have been sold out for a couple of years. This one is still in its uh, original wrap. It's never been opened. And uh, this book is probably worth four or five hundred dollars. So that's a that's a nice uh, nice prize. Uh, let's see, that's seventh. And then the eighth prize is a hundred dollar gift certificate plus. Listen to this, guys. A signed Bob Burns razor cutter. Best prize in the grouping. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Bob. I just, I, I mean, I don't know, but I, I think that these so, a signed razor cutter from Bob Burns, that could be a collectible. This is one of a kind. It's one of a kind, and so many people watch these uh, videos, and... The next thing you'll know, you'll see Bob Burns cutters on eBay or something. I don't know, but uh, so that's the prizes that we have, and um, all the entries uh, Debbie has jammed into this box. We're going to get a bigger box, but there you go. There must be three or four thousand of them in here, all jammed into this crazy box. So what we're going to do, Bob is in charge of the drawing of these. It's his responsibility. So if you don't win, don't get mad at me. <laughs> Write a nasty letter to Bob. <laughs> no, it's not that good. Wow. So what I'm going to do... Mm. Wow, that champagne is... Whew. Is this the new bottle or is that the old bottle? I guess that's the new bottle. i got to have another drink here. You know how it is, guys. All right, and um, put this back in the ice. We're going to dump this all into a bigger box. And then we're going to shake the hell out of it. Can you hold this box, Bob? Uh, let me take a lid off. All right. And I'm going to dump all this in here, all these entries. 
pants a lot. Oh, oh that's a winner just fell out. Yeah. That's my name down there. That's your <laughs> name in there. Let me get that back in here. Alright, now we gotta mix these up and do all kinds of things. And Is that good enough yet, Bob? What do you yeah, think? So. You think so? You know, it's just gonna dig inside anyway. Yeah. Really wonderful, you guy. I mean, the participants on this is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look at look. What is there? Two, three thousand in least. there? I don't know. At least, yeah. I keep the. Uh, somebody said I should uh, rent a sorting machine, and uh, <laughs> you guys just think it's a. Uh, it's too big here. We can't do stuff like that. But that's, I mean, I'm just doing the best I can here. Shifting them around. You think it's good, Bob? Oh, yeah. All right, now, let me get this out of here, and you can set the box down on the table if you want. Don't spill my drink, though. That's right. <laughs> we'll get a new what's, drawer if you spill my drink. What's the first prize we're uh, giving away? Now, remember, if you don't win, it ain't my fault. <laughs> and Bob's big enough to defend himself, too. Yeah, it work out. <laughs> look at him, 80 years old. Doesn't he look good? Mm. It's more important to look good than to feel good. <laughs> Maybe so. We're going to hear that before. All right, we're going to get down to it here. I just want to light my cigar. Ah, it's already lit. Hmm. You want a cigar, Bob? No, no, thank no, you. No, you sure? I want to stay 80. All right, we're going to we're going to start out, I guess, with the eighth prize, right, and work our way up. Is yeah, that what that you want to good. do, Bob? Yeah, that sounds good. All right, eighth prize, a hundred-hour gift certificate plus a signed yeah. Bob Burns cutter. That's right. You're going to personally sign I'll it, right? Personally sign it. It's certified. Certified. Probably worth a fortune too. Oh, at least. Gotta be. All right. Draw a draw a name and uh, let's see who uh, who won it. Digging deep in there. All right. What's your letter? What is all this here? Uh, it's a whole thing here. Um. Yeah. Let me borrow those glasses. Maybe I can see something. Yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, okay, the eighth prize, a hundred dollar gift certificate in the Bob Burns Cutter, is won by E1 Sterling of um, E1 um, New Comic, New Comic KI 184EF. Where is that, Ob? What is EF? Come on, EF. I'm not sure where, I think that's maybe... Let me see it. Maybe it's some place in England, I don't know. Uh, but he's the winner of the Bob Burns Cutter. Lucky man. A very lucky man. Probably the best prize there yeah. is out there. Ewan Sterling, we'll get back to him. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, do we have any tape where I can tape the winners to the prizes? Just put it on my desk. Layer them up. I'm afraid I'll get it. I don't want to get mixed up. We have it on tape. Oh, we can always. <laughs> okay, all right, that's good. You're right, Ob. Ob's always right. Okay, that was the eighth prize. Now the seventh prize is this wonderful, wonderful SS book by Rolf Seeger. Very, very valuable thing. Worth four or five hundred dollars. Bob, make a drawing there, sir. You enjoying this? Is oh, that right? nice. <laughs> Not hurting your arm, is it? No, no. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, this prize is one. Uh, sorry to borrow your glasses. Oh, that's quite right. This prize is won by um, Mickey Hollish of Brandon, Florida. So there you go, Mickey. Well, that's great, isn't it? Wow. I hope you enjoy this book. If you don't, you can put it e on eBay and probably get four or five hundred for it. So there we go. That's prize number seven. 
getting tired of you up to it uh, all right prize number six books is uh, a full set of Whitman exploring books uh, and as I said before volume one the army book has been out of print for two years and I've seen that book on eBay for four or five hundred dollars alone so with the rest of the books um, you know you're looking at I don't know six or seven hundred dollars in value you think of yeah you're gonna sign like them that. too right and besides that if you read them just think how educated you'll get on the hobby and you're gonna sign them too right DTC 100 prize yeah I can do yeah, that sure. DCT yeah I'll yeah. do I'll sign each one like that okay so here we go again uh, Bob Bob's Obs Bob, Bob yeah hard to get all this straight here <laughs> Make a drawing there and see who gets the books. Oh, the pink one, huh? Yeah, I couldn't resist that pink. Couldn't resist it, yeah. Oh, you like pink, <laughs> huh? Oh, boy, yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, this man's name is Alec Zander Shapiro, and it looks like he's from Russia. Hmm. So there we go, Alexander. You're right there. See that writing of? That's Russia. It's not. I don't know. You don't know? I don't have no. my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I got your glasses on. <laughs> well, take it from me. I've seen a lot of Russian names, and that that is a Russian. So good for you, uh, Alexander. You've got a full set of uh, Whitman books. The thing I'm worried about is going to cost me a bloody fortune <laughs> to ship them to Russia. God, that's got to be about a $200, uh, oh boy. Maybe we can pick another, no, 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 we're going to get, no, okay. Maybe we cut it out in the video. All right, well, that's, congratulations, Alexandro. Boy, you really, uh, that was what? What prize was that? That was uh, six. We're on six? five. Okay, number five. Uh, this is the Atwood book that's never been opened, the 1965 original book. Uh, that started the hobby. It started my crazy uh, life in this hobby, and I, I personally think this is one of the most incredible books ever written. Bob, I hope you pick a good name out for this. Go ahead, reach in there and look down deep. What do we got down the bottom? Yep. All right. Let's see what we got here. For the Atwood book, this come this is awarded to Jay Rukama from the Netherlands. All right, <laughs> all right, sir. You can see we're very international oh, yeah. with, uh, with what we have. So there you go. That's a very, very, um, very good book and very valuable. And um, thank you for t for for. Uh, how do I say that? Participating. Too, too yeah. much champagne too much right, too much stuff, there. Yeah. I guess I need another drink. <laughs> Maybe I can talk and Bob can fill in the yeah. words that like I can't a, pronounce. Ventriloquist act here. Yeah, ventriloquist. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep my hand back here. You keep, you keep moving your <laughs> yeah, 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 that's good. Yeah, that's great. I love it. Oh, you're a good guy. <laughs> Putting up with my frailties here. Um... That was the fifth prize. I don't think we gave the fourth prize out, though, did we, Ob? Well, that's why it's next. <laughs> oh, we're going up to that. That's right. We're going backwards. Oh, See, I even lost track of that. I'm so drunk. Oh, I got to quit this stuff. Oh. Is this exciting, collectors? I think it is. Hmm. Okay, now, the uh, fourth prize is the great, um, what do you call these things again, Ob? Sweetheart pins. Sweetheart pins. <laughs> these were pins that uh, servicemen bought and gave to their girlfriends to wear on their uh, shirts, you know, so that, so that uh, people would know they're engaged or going out with a guy in the service. Look at those airplanes. Aren't they neat? Yeah, they're nice. Yeah, and this uh, captain's hat, and they're really nice. I, I like this. I mean, a lot of you guys, it's not German, it's American, but it's still 
still cool. So what do you think, Bob? I'm American. Yeah, let's see if we get somebody. <laughs> we'll get foreigners so far. Yeah, all foreigners. We got one from Florida. Yeah. Oh, we'll see. That's pretty foreign too. Okay, the winner is um, Stanley Walker uh, from South Windsor, Connecticut. Isn't that nice? Stanley? Thank you very much, Stanley. And I hope your girlfriend will enjoy these pins. I like them. Don't you like yeah, them, they're Bob? Neat. They're neat. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're getting there. That was uh, the fourth. Ah, now we're down to the bigger prizes now, Bob. Well, Robbie can show that I don't want to pick all that up. Third prize is this seen great. It many times. Let's do it. It's a great woolen armband. You know, you see a lot of lot of armbands, but very few are made with that wool like that and highest quality. And it's very rare to see one that has no mothing in it too. You know, the yeah, moths really amazing. get at that stuff. So, well, I got myself another another pop, which I don't need, I guess. And let me see if my uh, Fuente is still lit. Hmm. So now we're looking at the third prize armband. I would like to win that myself because I don't want to give it away, but uh, here we go. You have to do it. You have to do it. It's all part of the it's all part of the fun. Alright, Bob, Ready? draw something. Not the pink one. <laughs> Get from the bottom, yeah. yeah go down deep. Yeah. It used to be on top. Oh, there we go. Is that one or two? That's Not one. just one. All right, let's see who the winner of the armband is. Harry Kling from White Deer, Pennsylvania. Isn't that nice? We got a local guy. Oh, local boy. Local boy. Well, I hope that you'll like that, Harry. Uh, good I part. like it that you... I need some scotch tape to put that next to the... Third prize. Maybe just I lift can the, stick. Uh, yeah, there you go. Stick it right under here. Yeah, just lift it up. A little. Harry Kling. Thank you, Harry, for watching my videos. Second prize. This is the uh, the wonderful uh, Hitler Youth knife with a motto on the blade. What's that worth, Bob? Ooh. Eight, nine hundred dollars. Sure. I guess it must be oh, something yeah. like that. Sure. It's not a bad prize. Huh? Oh, that's nice. No. We sure I had something like that when I was little. <laughs> you weren't going to hit on you. Oh, thank God. <laughs> well, let's turn that bottom over here. Bob, it's up to you. Right. The future of these collectors is up to you, buddy. Lucky me. Lucky you. Nice Hitler Youth knife, guys. Yeah, it is. Uh, let's see who got it. Oh. Getting fancy now. Yeah, getting fancy. Hmm. I'm going to take this hat off. I would. Put it over this or something. Well, you got to wear it out for the rest of the video. I do? Yeah, you can't take that no, off now. Not, <laughs> not allowed to take the hat off. He aired out a little bit, so. Did I look like I had hair when I took it off? No. No, I was still bald. No, you look better with the all hat right, on. Alright, I know, I know you're all saying who won the damn prize. This is a nice Hitler Youth knife. It too. is, definitely. This is uh, from Torsten Fortune. I don't know where he's from. Ah, greetings from Norway. Mm -hmm. So it's a Norwegian Torsten Fortune. 
Norway's a nice country. Oh, I'm glad that. Uh, see, you can see how international this oh, uh, this is. Is really. Uh, so congratulations to you, Mr. Fortune. That's a very, very nice um, Hitler Youth knife, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, I think it's something that uh, you want to add to your collection. Uh, if not, I guess you can sell it back to me or something. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to do that, but cash equivalent. <laughs> All right, now we're now we're down to it. The um, the Icorn Mint Army Dagger. It's it's really a um, it's a beautiful beautiful dagger. Oh, grip. Yeah, the grip is so pretty, yeah. and I like the way the silverine is still there where the cross guard oh, protected yeah. it from you know the uh, the silverine tones on the scabbard, but because the cross guard was over it, the air didn't get mm -hmm. to it, so it didn't tone so much. It has a mint blade. It's a classic classic Icorn Army dagger. And if you're collecting army daggers, that would be the prime of your oh, collection. Definitely. So here we go, Bob. Okay. This, is we got, this is a big thing here. The second big one. First one. Yeah, this is, this is the this is the first first prize. That dagger's worth about twelve hundred dollars, Bob. So that's not a bad prize, no, right? Oh. No. All right, mm. there you go. Pick one out. Mm. It's just crazy what luck is, you know. Some guy and all this, all these things. What is it? Three thousand things in there, and it's some old guy from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's two there. there. Oh, one guy lost, and we'll never know. Mm, yeah. Take the top guy. Okay, the top guy. You ready, Bob? Go for it. Okay, this is awarded to. Richard Carmichael uh, from Edinburgh, Scotland. Man, we're all over the world on this thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, isn't that nice? Uh, congratulations, Richard Carmichael, Edinburgh, Scotland. Isn't that something? He won a $1,200 Army Dagger for sending in a little raffle ticket. Congratulations. I think that's, uh, I think that's just great. It sure is. Wow. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, I'm sorry for anybody that didn't win. Wait, I want to give away a couple more Bob Burns cutters. You think we should? Yeah, let's do five more names. Will you sign some, Bob? Sure. You'll sign them and sure. we'll... All right, let's give five away. Five and, uh, away, yeah. Think five is good, Bob? You want to do ten? We can do ten. We'll do five. All right, we'll... let's just do... We're running out of tape. Do five cutters. Well, where are you going with where the you tickets? Going with those? Where are you going back? Huh? Well, we gotta need. We need the tickets. Oh, that's right. We, gotta, <laughs> that's right. Right. Yeah. we don't know who we're gonna give it to yet. Yeah. Uh, whipping too much champagne. Uh, I know I'm drunk, but uh, come on, let's, get, let's go. Let's it's see. It's 100. No, we'll, I can, we'll put yeah. you to bed when we're finished. Oh, yeah. good job. Thanks. I'm calling you Ob now instead <laughs> of Bob. Okay. Okay. So. We're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna. We're going to give away uh, five Bob Burns cutters. Signed Bob Burns cutters. And uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, six of them. All right, here we go. Six cutters. Bob Rawson. Well, you no, you no, do it. You, you, no, you're, you're the official. I'm not. I'm just standing here bow wowing. There's one. All right, the first cutter goes to. Constance Palaccio. She's from uh, Stockton, California. Congratulations to you, Constance. Once you got this signed and all by Bob Burns, it's going to be a valuable thing. Don't you think, Bob? Oh, no, definitely. Just put I mean, it on the clip. Celebrity. Mm. Okay, the next one. Go ahead, Bob. Draw one. Let's see who this is. Randy Bosma from uh, Coran Forks, ND. What's ND? North Dakota. North Dakota. Yeah, that's something you don't place you don't hear much about. Oh, well, glad to have you in here, Randy. 
All right, you're you're good for that one. Just put it on the clip. Huh? Slide it on the clip of the of the knife, the oh, entry. Good. I don't know how to slide anything. Uh, I'm barely able to drink my drink. You're gonna sign all these, right, Bob? This will slide under. Right? Okay. Come on, we gotta get along here now. We gotta out be of signed. Power. Let's go. Next one. Right. Here we go. Number three. Philip Nasser. Philip's from Mobile, Alabama. There you go. There Congratulations, you go. Philip. Who wouldn't want to sign Bob Burns Cutter? Me. <laughs> All right, next one. Thomas Cole from Cambria, California. All right. How many was that, Bob? That's uh, one, two, three, four. One more? It's two more. Two more? Yeah. One more. Yeah, two more. I'm saying two. I said six. Oh, we're going to do six? Yeah. Okay. Todd Simmons from Canada. Ooh. From the uh, Sim. What is that? Simo. I got your glasses on, or I can't read. Simo, Canada. Or no, Simo, Ontario, Canada. Okay, that's good. Okay. Is it this guy? One more, Bob. Last one. One more, and that's Last it. Last lucky person. I have to go upstairs and throw up after you're done. <laughs> Uh, David Pentonich from West Lake, West Lake, Ohio. All right. That's it. That's it. We got those. Uh, okay. Now you got to sign those, oh, yeah. Bob. Will do. I'm telling you, I think that the collectors are going to uh, uh, going to like those um, those sign cutters and. Uh, I think it's going to be so big, at least within our our group here, that uh, we're going to we're going to offer Bob Burns sign cutters um, for twenty bucks. But I mean that includes the post the postage is like fifteen dollars, so the things are nothing really. But Bob is willing to do it, and uh, we'll see what happens. So if anybody wants a signed Bob Burns cutter, we'll do it. Is that okay, Bob? Sounds good to me. Yeah, it sounds good. Well, I thank you very much for uh, watching this video. I know it was kind of long, and uh, uh, but we had some good prizes. And uh, I'm sorry for those of you that didn't win. We did the best we could to give everybody the best chance. But um, that's the way it goes. So here we are again. Uh, I guess we'll have another unboxing next week and uh, do the best we can and I just want to thank everybody for all the uh, all the attention you guys are the best and thank you Bob for no, coming not a problem. it's really really nice uh, good to be here now you can put a face to the Bob Burns cutter and uh, thanks for watching and I hope you'll uh, you'll continue to